Earlier this morning, uh, Juan was speaking about um, more creative funding structures for IPFS and other open source development. And so I just want to give you a very quick illustration of um, one way that this has worked. So uh, in 2022, we set up the IPFS Implementations Grants Program. Um, and the goal was, you know, until then, for the first seven or eight years of IPFS, all the implementations were the same, had the same functions. Um, they were kind of in these mono libraries, uh, and there was a single reference implementation, Go IPFS, um, that made somewhat opinionated choices about networking, um, uh, you know, how data, how and when data was hashed, what what formats it used, um, and this, the goal of this fund was to um, push the diversification of different implementations and different approaches to um, uh, to IPFS based systems. So um, the initial goal and the initial name was implementations, but in reality, it actually turned out to be funding equally implementations and integrations. Um, and so, at, you know, this was the initial definition. Uh, we were going to include current and new implementations of IPFS, um, any stewardship, community stewardship that went along with it, uh, developer productivity and tooling for the whole project, and specifically language or platform integrations. And, and I think we all got very excited about this um, because, uh, you know, at, at the time there was that one reference implementation in Go um, but there are so many more languages, R and Python in particular for the scientific community, JavaScript, uh, the most popular language in the developer world, um, you know, on and on and on. Um, and none of those were, uh, you know, none of those devs could easily access IPFS or, you know, integrate IPFS into what they were building. So um, what happened was this Cambrian explosion, um, as we like to call it, of lots of different approaches. And some of these are implementations, some of these are integrations. Adam, right there, I'm gonna out you, um, was uh, one of the teams, led one of the teams that we worked with. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a couple case studies. IRO is actually the other one. That was the first project that we funded. So it was a ground up Im implementation in a new language. Um, the team had over a decade of IPFS experience and also selling IPFS based data versioning software. Um, initially, it was a six-figure grant, which comprised just a fraction of the overall funding for their project. So the, um, our grants program did not provide the entire funding for it, and I think that was valuable. Um, and I'll explain why later. Um, and today, uh, not only have they implemented IPFS twice, as I mentioned, they built the initial thing and then realized that they wanted to re-architect it, so they built it a second time. Uh, now they have customers and users in gaming, telecom, infrastructure, um, Filecoin, you know, all sorts of applications. Um, the second case study uh, is the Unity and Unreal Gaming plugins that Adam's uh, studio developed. Um, it makes gaming downloads near instant by using progressive IPFS-based loading, um, and then all the game assets are stored on, on Web3 storage, and they can be loaded incrementally instead of, um, and you know, what, even once you've opened your game, instead of wait, waiting for the whole thing to come beforehand. Um, it's targeting a huge market, so 3 billion monthly game downloads. I think there's 15, like 150,000 game developers in the world. Is, am I underestimating that? More, okay. There's a lot of game developers. Um, and Unity and Unreal together form the lion's share of, of the gaming engines that are used. Um, the team is a professional gaming studio, newer to IPFS, but they know the gaming space extremely well. Um, and started with a modest grant that when that went well, um, grew into a larger grant for more, more features and a second engine. Um, we also collaborated on bringing that to users um, through a, a sponsorship and a talk at um, the premier gaming conference, game dev conference. Um, and now they're writing a brand new game based on these plugins. And so I think a couple patterns you can draw from this are in both cases, the team were deep experts in their domain. Uh, do not, and, and you'll also see not necessarily experts in IPFS, although, you know, poked around enough to, to know what they were doing and, um, and collaborate with, with other devs. And I think there's a parallel here, hopefully, for the open science community, where I don't think anyone coming from IPFS solely would be able to build the right tools. But I think it's the people in the open science community, maybe someone in this room or someone that you collaborate with or work with, um, that can identify you know, what's that little friction that we can build 
something small but usable around, small, usable, maybe a little bit magic, and then from there grow um, and, and show the value of that and expand into something that can become a standard across the whole field. I'll stop now. I don't want this to be a one-way talk. Um, I would love to hear any questions that people have or um, ideas that that sparks. Yeah, maybe I missed it, but yeah. So what are your different funding sources you have? Is it really just contributions that people make to the funding? Where, oh, where, did, where does this funding come from? Yeah. This came from Protocol Labs and the Filecoin Foundation. Okay, yeah. And who gives to Protocol Labs and the foundation? Um, both Protocol Labs and the Filecoin Foundation were allocated um, portions of the Filecoin token. I, I don't know if you're familiar with the mm -hmm. Filecoin network. It's an incentivized storage network um, uh, that comes with a cri cryptocurrency and, um, and that's the incentive mechanism for storage providers all around the world to basically rent or sell capacity. Um, so uh, a new token was created and because of Protocol Labs and Filecoin Foundation's, I guess, contributions towards bringing those to life, um, they received a portion of those tokens and as they were sold, um, went on to fund a lot of the projects in the ecosystem, including IPFS and LibPDP, which are dependencies um, for Filecoin. Well, thank you. My apologies for my naivete. Yeah, but thank oh, you. No, nice. yeah. no apology necessary. Um, I know it's uh, not, not the most straightforward, but... Thank you, Michelle. I wanted to know what is the relationship that you have then with these companies, case studies, how do they continuously improve IPFS? Do you gather feedback from them? Uh, have you implemented any of their recommendations? Um, it, it varies, uh, but I think, you know, um, there, there's only a, a pretty small number, I think seven or eight of these awardees, and so we're in pretty close contact with them. Um, and uh, in some cases, you know, Iro, for example, uh, they've built their own implementation, so they're not necessarily looking, you know, waiting for improvements elsewhere, but they're major contributors to the conversation, to these events, and um, to, um, you know, the, the strategy of the project. Um, I should mention that, you know, just more explicitly, um, I'm seeking proposals, right? I'm seeking proposals from this community and others, but uh, this one in particular, for plugins or integrations or improvements, um, they could be adapters or importers, not imposters, sorry. Um, and ideally, it's a small MVP, but with a pathway to broader adoption across the whole space. Yeah. I'm sorry, you can just tell me to leave when you want. Um, but um, are these coins then interchangeable with other currency? Yeah, so the grant, when, when these grants, I think we're all dispersed in regular American dollars. So the funding came into the, um, actually I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, I, I believe these grants were all done in, in US, USD. Yeah, I'm sorry Michelle, but I Googled you. Um, but so why, how does this, seems to me not only a new, let's say model for building platforms and technologies, but it's also a new business model. Is that really what is underlying this? Um, this grants program has no business model tied to it. It's only, it's a, the, the mission, uh, it's, it's actually administered by um, a not-for-profit. And the, the mission is to grow adoption for, um, for IPFS. So it does not necessarily have to be commercialized. Just learning, but it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I usually go to the European Commission or NIH or something for funding. But that, you know, that's a restrictive area, mm -hmm. <laughs> difficult area to work into to get the money. And then when you get the money, you have a problem anyway. So, yeah. 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 In, um, in the United States, there's the SBIR, the Small Business Innovation Research Grants, and they have a it's um, structured as a phase one and phase two as well. So phase one, easier, smaller, um, but you have to successfully complete a phase one to get a phase two. And I think that's one pattern we're seeing here that, that we think is uh, useful. So how could you grow your funding? How could we grow the total available funding for, yeah. for this? How, how could you do it 
could you do it outside of your coin or could you yeah yes the the um the implementations fund is set up to receive donations from anywhere of any kind there are there are these uh no ask uh grants that you're doing but is there a a complement to that that does the type of funding that I received from others like or, or do you prefer to stay out of that entirely uh, for as, as being acting more as an actual investor for for later stages um, pro, the protocol labs protocol labs has had a, a, an investment fund that can make investments like that there are also a lot of companies in the network that um, are pretty creative about their funding. I mean some earn revenue and use that to bootstrap. I think that's where IRO is at now. Um, others uh, issue their own token. Um, others receive grants or um, contributions from other projects. Um, so there's, there's, there's no restriction on, on how projects can get additional funding beyond what we offer. Yeah, but so there's not really like a in place pipeline of like you, so you first receive a uh, yeah, regular grant and then kind of that would open you up later for an actual investment with uh, some kind of mutual stake. Um, it's funny that you said the word pipeline because we actually sort of created an, an informal one with intros and like, you know, we shared information, um, but there's no way to guarantee when you get the initial grant that that's gonna be a good idea to invest in later or, you know, to invest in either like a, um, a venture sense or a, a, a grant making sense. So we don't make promises up front, but uh, it's very much kind of tries to bring you into the ecosystem um, and you know open our doors and open our contacts. I'm leaving, promise. Um, just to bring it back to me, because it's all about me. Um, but I think here, this is a really interesting thing for research assessment too, because if I get a grant or money from Horizon Europe for a project, I'm like super cool. You know, everybody thinks, oh wow, you're, you know. Or if I get a grant from WHO or from NIH or something like that, oh, you're super cool, you know. Everybody cares about who's giving the money and that, and that kind of thing. If I get money from the pharmaceutical in industry, like I'm a super bad person, or if I take it from the tobacco industry, they're gonna lynch me, right? So it's still money. And, so it's, I think it's really interesting, too, that in this space of research assessment, we're going to have to think about the different sources of funding and, and how we evaluate that as well. I, I think that's a really important point. I think it's an important point for the funders as well, for mm -hmm. people like yourself or others who are providing money. So in this case, unknown source a relatively unknown source. Right, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But letting people do something creative and innovative and things like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the grant doesn't necessarily have to go to the researcher or the, or the academic. It could go to a contractor or consultant that they collaborate with um, to, to build the, the software. All right. Thank you. <laughs>